SpaceX is developing the Starship vehicle for both human and robotic flights to the surface of the Moon and Mars. This two-stage vehicle offers unprecedented payload capacity and the promise of lowering the cost of surface access due to its full reusability. An individual Starship spacecraft is being designed to fly large crews to another planetary surface, many of whom could conduct long-term science investigations taking advantage of the support infrastructure SpaceX intends to build. At present, the focus of SpaceX is on reaching Mars and providing relatively near-term opportunities for expanding humanity on the Red Planet. And recently, for the first time, SpaceX has teamed up with researchers from NASA and several other U.S. institutions to publicly discuss how it plans to use Starship to build Mars Base Alpha. With the help of co-authors from NASA Ames, SAT, and half a dozen prestigious U.S. universities and institutes, SpaceX has begun to answer exactly how the company will proceed to the Red Planet in a 2021 white paper submitted for the National Academy's Next Planetary Science and Astrobiology Decadal Survey. SpaceX used the paper to describe its plans for early missions to Mars in unprecedented detail. The white paper marks the first time SpaceX has properly fleshed out the basics of its first crewed and uncrewed Starship missions to Mars and confirms a great deal of well-informed speculation. There is also a discussion over how payloads will be transported to the Moon and Mars and the types of payloads carried. So let's go over the key points discussed in the white paper. According to experts, an appreciation of Starship's capabilities is important for understanding how and why this vehicle can provide unprecedented opportunities for the planetary science community to fly payloads to the Moon and Mars. Starship is 9 meters in diameter and 50 meters in length, and SpaceX says the spacecraft will be able to transport a payload of 100 metric tons to low Earth orbit, and higher orbits can be accessed after the spacecraft is refueled by tanker Starships. Unlike any other orbital launch system, Starship would be fully reusable, and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has said that this could lower operational costs to about $2 million per use. Likely as soon as the mid-2020s, SpaceX will begin launching uncrewed Starships to Mars to verify the system's maturity and readiness, and to deliver significant quantities of cargo to the surface in advance of human arrival. Starship missions will utilize in-space propellant transfer, enabled by Starship's substantial low-Earth orbit performance capability and rapid launch cadence. The booster launches Starship into Earth orbit, where the Starship is refilled with methane and oxygen by tanker flights from Earth, typically prepositioned in advance of the launch of the primary payload. Both boosters and tankers return to the launch site for reuse. The refilled Starship vehicle then travels to Mars and descends to the surface. Refilling Starship in orbit effectively resets the rocket equation, allowing for large payloads to be transported to these planetary destinations. Local resource characterization, pre-placement of supplies, infrastructure development, and technology testing should be accomplished on these first Starship flights or subsequent uncrewed Starships, depending on the timing and availability of payloads for flight. In addition, such missions could enable the delivery of mobile robotic assets that could be used to perform planetary science research either autonomously or through high-latency teleoperation. Starship flights carrying humans to Mars will follow the launch of uncrewed Starship vehicles. Crewed Starships will have a forward space of 1,100 cubic meters, a liquid oxygen tank of 800 cubic meters, and a methane tank of 600 cubic meters. Both tanks have a stainless steel primary structure and may be repurposed later as pressurized living space on the surface of Mars. These first crewed starships will likely each have about 10 to 20 people on board, with an additional 100 metric tons of available cargo mass per starship. Current SpaceX mission planning includes the intention that these vehicles will also carry hardware needed to support the human base, including equipment for increased power production, water extraction, liquid oxygen and methane production, pre-prepared landing pads, radiation shielding, dust control equipment, exterior shelters for humans and equipment etc. Humans will likely live on the Starship for the first few years until additional habitats are constructed, so the radiation risk must be assessed and mitigated with equipment planned to support this initial infrastructure. The first wave of uncrewed Starship vehicles can also be relocated or repurposed as needed to support the humans on the surface. These vehicles will be valuable assets for storage, habitation, and as a source of refined metal structures and resources. They also could accommodate scientific research laboratories. The white paper also describes the capability of Starships to enable planetary science missions for NASA. Starships will allow increased flights for science experiments, technology demonstrations, and capability development to enable human spaceflight missions through NASA partnership. In addition, Starship has the ability to deploy orbiters on approach.
This capability would provide the opportunity to deliver either relatively large orbital assets with sophisticated remote sensing instrumentation, or many smaller satellites that could serve a variety of purposes into Martian orbit. Starship is also designed to lift off from its planetary destination and return to Earth, thereby allowing the return of crew members and unprecedented quantities of Martian samples to Earth for scientific analysis. Many samples with greater sample variety will allow for more scientifically robust analytical studies in laboratories on Earth. Never before has the science or exploration community had the potential to send such payload capacity to these destinations and return as much sample material as can be accommodated by Starship. The ability to carry large payloads and a significant number of personnel to the surface of Mars underscores the need for an integrated strategy between the various NASA directorates. The capabilities of the Starship vehicle to transport unprecedented quantities of cargo and crew to the Martian surface will require a new support structure within NASA to participate and provide payloads for these flights. SpaceX envisions an accelerated schedule for flights, but NASA's traditional schedule for selecting and flying planetary payloads is not necessarily consistent with this timeline. For example, SpaceX is aggressively developing Starship for initial orbital flights, after which they intend to fly uncrewed flights to the Moon and send initial test flights to Mars at the earliest Mars mission opportunity, potentially as soon as 2024. To be most effective, planning should begin immediately to prepare for payloads on the first uncrewed Starship flights, likely first to the Moon, and then for Mars. In short, the SpaceX Starship system fundamentally changes the paradigm for NASA science, technology development and testing, and human exploration of space. Furthermore, Starships flown to the Moon and Mars will provide opportunities to deliver massive cargoes and large numbers of people to enable sustained and self-reliant human off-world presence. Are you excited about SpaceX's plan to establish a permanent human colony on Mars? What challenges do you think NASA and SpaceX will face on their journey to Mars? Please let us know in the comments section. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos related to Starship. And as always, thanks for watching.